This is Math 99, we are going to look at 8.6. We're going to bring together all this fraction work uh, to solve some equations. Before we've been doing expressions, these are equations, they have equal signs. So we're actually going to be solving for x on these. Um, before we get started, I want to remind you that this chapter is out of the elementary algebra text, the elementary algebra book. It'll say that in the problem set, but I just want to remind you that this is the, the, the second book that we use at, on OpenStax. Okay, so I'm going to look at these three fractions, 1 over x plus 1 over 3 equals 5 over 6. And you know, the thing that kind of makes this a little bit painful is that uh, I've got fractions here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find uh, the lowest common denominator. I'm going to find the number that, that all of these go into, x, 3, and 6. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by that. And what that will do is that will completely do away with the fractions. So I'm not going to multiply by a version of 1. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, 6 is 2 times 3. So if I look at all of these pieces, I've got a, a 2, a 3, and an x. So really, 6x is my, my number. That's the thing that I want to multiply everything by. So I'm going to multiply both sides here by 6x. This gets multiplied by 6x, and this gets multiplied by 6x. And I'm going to distribute that into there. And, and notice what happens. I have uh, 6x over x plus 6x over 3. I, I'm writing out a lot of the steps. We probably won't write all the, out all the steps like this in later problems. 5 times 6x over 6. So now look, the x's drop out, leaving me a 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2, leaving me a 2x. Uh, 6 divided by 6 is gone, leaving me a 5x. And the fractions are entirely gone. Yeah, you see, this is super clever. If I multiply both sides by that, it does away with the fractions altogether. So I picked a value that would do that. Um, keep going from here. I'll subtract 2x from both sides just to solve this equation. So I end up with 6 equals 3x. Divide both sides by 3. x is equal to 2. And I should check it by plugging it back in. Really, all I want to make sure is that if I plug it back in, I'm not dividing by 0. If I had gotten 0 as an answer, I'd have to throw it out. So x is 2. Let's give this next one a try. Um, I've got 3, 5, and So I'm going to multiply everything by 15x. I'm basically going to multiply everything by um, 3 times 5 times x. I could write it as 15x. I'm going to write it by, like this because this will... Um, show like what's canceling really easy. 3 times 5 times x, 3 times 5 times x. So 3's cancel out, 5's cancel out, x's cancel out. So here I'm left with 5 times x times 2, which is 10x. Here I'm left with 1 times 3 times x, which is 3x. And here I'm left with 3 times 5, which is 15. Again, super clever. Pick something to multiply everything by that cancels out all the fractions. Cool, add those together, I get 13x. Divide by 13. x is 15 thirteenths, and I can leave it as that fraction. Plug it back in, it wouldn't make All right, let's give this one a go. Uh, so my denominators are a and a squared. So my common denominator is a squared. I'm gonna multiply everything by a squared. Uh, 1 times a squared is a squared. 2, this a cancels out one of those a's, so this leaves me a minus 2a. a squared divided by a squared is 1, so that leaves me a 15, equals 15. And so now I'm left with a quadratic to solve. So I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides, get it over to here. And I'm going to try and factor this. Things that multiply to negative 15 add to negative 2 are negative 5 and 3. So it looks like a would be 5 or negative 3. And if I plug those back in, I would not be divided by 0, so I'm good. Those are my answers. All right, a couple more to consider. Um, I have a 5n plus 1 and a 3n. So my common denominator is uh, 3n times 5n plus 1. I'm going to multiply both sides by that. So this divides out, uh, this divides out. 
So 3n times 3 is 6n. This should actually be a 9n. So then we distribute that 2. We get uh, 10n plus 2. Now we can subtract 10n from both sides. So we get a negative n equals 2. Multiply both sides by negative 1 to solve that. That gives us n equals negative 2. And that is the answer. Next one. I got an x plus 1. I got an x minus 1. I've got a difference of squares. So I can factor this into x plus 1 times x minus 1. So that's when I'm going to multiply everything by x plus 1 times x minus 1. That would get rid of everything. Boop. Goes. That divides out. This whole thing divides out. So I'm left with 2 times x minus 1, which is 2x minus 2, plus 1 times x plus 1. x plus 1 equals 1. So 2x plus x is 3x. Negative 2 plus 1 is uh, <laughs> negative 1. Add 1 to both sides. And x equals 2 thirds. If I plug that back in, it won't make me divide by 0. Notice, like, if I got a negative 1, I'd have to throw it out because that would make me divide by 0 or a positive 1. Okay, looking at this next one. I've got an x plus 5 times an x minus 1. So that's what I'm going to multiply everything by. And I have to do it to both sides uh, to keep the equation equal, right? Do the same thing to both sides. That goes. And then over on this side, the x minus 1 divides out. So I'm left with 2 times x minus 1, 2x minus 2 minus 1. So this negative 1 is getting distributed into there. So minus x minus 5 equals uh, x plus 5 times x minus 1. So I'm going to multiply that out. That would be uh, x squared plus 5x minus x minus 5 which is x squared plus 4x minus 5. Okay, I'm going to simplify this left side. Uh, 2x minus x is x. Negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. And it looks like I have a quadratic. So I'm going to get it equal to 0 and try and factor it. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So that gives me x squared plus 3x. I'm going to add 7 to both sides. Uh, plus 2 equals 0. Uh, this would factor to 2 and 1. So x equals negative 2 and negative 1. And if I go back into here, I could plug both those in. Neither one will make a 0 in the denominator. So there's my, there's my answer. Whoa, that got big. All right, let's do a couple more. Um, I've got an x minus 5 and an x minus 2. I could factor this. This factors to x minus 5, x minus 2. So that's what I'm going to multiply everything by, that denominator that they all have in common. I'm sorry, that they is the least common denominator. They all have at least some part of it. It completely cancels on this left-hand side. So that just leaves me an x plus three, 13. Uh, the x minus 5 goes here. So 6 gets distributed into there, 6x minus 12. The x minus 2 goes here. So I've got a negative 4 going into there. So minus 4x plus 20. Uh, let's combine up some like terms on the right. 6x minus 4x is negative is 2x, positive 2x. Negative 12 plus 20 is 8. This is x plus 13. Uh, subtract x from both sides. That gives me an x over here. Subtract 8 from both sides. That gives me a 5. All right. And now I actually have a problem. 
Uh, notice if I try to plug 5 back into my original problem, like right here, that would make me divide by 0. 6 divided by 0. So I've got to throw it out, and I have to say no solution. So I'm going to cross that out, and I could write no solution, or I can make the empty set, and just like a 0 with a line through it. So if I get an answer that makes me, when I plug it back in, divide by 0, it's not actually an answer. I have to throw it out. And it happens because when we do this multiplication, we lose track that we had something in the denominator. And the shadow answer kind of uh, slips in there. All right, I've got, I've got one down here below that I, that I want us to solve. This will be the last, last one. All right, let's factor stuff. Uh, so on this first one, uh, I can factor out a 5. On the second one, I can factor out a 3. And on this one here, well, I can factor out a 15 and see what happens. So if I take out a 15, I get y squared minus 4. Ah, which I can factor again. y squared minus 4 is a difference of squares. So this is y plus 2 times y minus 2. So this is 15, which is 3 times 5. That's nice. Uh, times y plus 2 times y minus 2. So that 15 y plus 2 y minus 2 is my, is my lowest common denominator because this one needs a 5 and a y plus uh, y minus 2. Yeah. So I'm going to multiply everything by it. So on the left-hand side, it'll, it'll cancel out together. I'm sorry, the right-hand side. And it'll leave me with uh, 2y squared minus 19y equal, uh, plus 54. Okay, notice here, if I multiply by 15 y plus 2, y minus 2, the y minus 2 is going to drop out, and the 5 will take this into a 3. So this becomes, that's a 3y, so I'm going to put the 3y into there, 3y squared plus 6y. And now if I multiply this one by it, the y plus 2 divides out. The 3 takes a 3 out of there. So this is a 5 times 5 is 25, and it's negative. So I'm going to distribute a negative 25 into here, minus 25y, and then a negative times a positive, and that would be a 2, so it's a positive 50. Hoo-wee. All right, I'll keep going from here. I have a quadratic. If I subtract 2y squared, I'm going to get this equal to 0 and try and factor it. If I subtract 2y squared from both sides, that gives me a y squared. Uh, let's see, 6 minus 25, what's that, 19? Yeah, this is a negative 19y. So if I add 19y to both sides, oh, nice. That cancels out. If I subtract 54 from both sides, Ah, that gives me minus 4. Oh, boy. I know what's going to... I can see what's going to happen. See, I have a y squared minus 4 in the denominator here. Both my answers are going to be invalid because this was in a denominator. And if I make this 0, I'm dividing by 0. But just for form, this factors to uh, y plus 2 times y minus 2 equals 0. So this would be y equals 2 or negative 2. And notice if I plug those back in to those denominators, I'm dividing by 0. Throw out those answers. No solution. All right. Post the questions. Give those, uh, give those practice problems a try. And um, remember, we are using the other text, the, the elementary algebra text for this section.